In recreating Ancient Egypt, Assassin's Creed Origins doesn't just give players a city or three to explore with some countryside in between, it's building an entire seamless country you can travel freely across. This is the biggest world ever created for an Assassin's Creed game, and it's packed with dynamic things to discover and pursue. You know, when we started by saying let's do Ancient Egypt, it was going to be a country. Ancient Egypt meant many things for us. It meant, yes, cities, but also all the wilderness areas, and we wanted to show the diversity of this wilderness and, and something that people, as they play the game and get into hours and hours of it, they're constantly seeing new stuff from the world, from the environment. The team began with a world around the size of Assassin's Creed IV Black Flags with one important difference. It's all land. Well, it's mostly land. No matter where you are, there's a density to the landscape that creates a feeling that there's always some area you haven't explored, something you haven't uncovered. In terms of the, the granularity of the details, the, the experiences that you can have, the things you can run into, the NPCs, the animals, the fauna, uh, it was, it's much, much more dense. Uh, so this is definitely, in terms of content, the biggest world we've, we've ever built. We wanted that the exploration of the world to really be jaw-dropping. We wanted people to be lost in this world for hours and hours, so the game is quite huge. The world is massive. Egypt, even in the game setting of 49 BCE, was never an undifferentiated landscape of deserts, pyramids, and snazzy headgear. It was huge and cosmopolitan, a hub of trade, agriculture, and craftsmanship. From Alexandria to Memphis, Egypt was a place of geographical contrast and cultural diversity, and recreating the entire country as a single open world is one of Assassin's Creed Origins' greatest achievements. So if you go into Alexandria, it's a very Greek city, a very big and broad streets, and then you go into Memphis, it's very crowded, and all of this is based on the historical research that we do. So we learned, for instance, that the, the Memphis is very close to the Nile, and that the course of the Nile changed with centuries and that it affected the, how the city was built. And so in return, that affects the way that we create that city and that, that is what players will experience. A city filled with, with water, with caves, with, uh, uh, surrounded by the Nile, with boats around. So uh, very, very nice and rich city. So historical research is very important for us. Next to capturing the scale and detail of Egypt, the game's biggest task is to fill its vast spaces with interesting things to see and do. The Egypt of Assassin's Creed Origins is a dynamic place, one where you'll always be able to find wildlife to hunt, a secret to uncover, a bandit gang to raid, or a quest to pursue. In fact, you'll need to discover the game's quests on your own, and there are multiple ways to do it. A vital contact might direct you to someone who wants you to check on a friend in danger, for example, or you might just stumble onto that friend while exploring and get pulled into a new adventure. You can even leave a quest at any time, pursue other tasks, and then pick up again from where you left off. There's tombs and temples to explore, there's puzzles in the world, you know, left by the ancient people. There's a lot of uh, really cool activities to do in the world. There's a huge density there. Assassin's Creed Origins is set during the reign of Cleopatra, an extremely tumultuous and pivotal era for Egypt, and one that fits in well with the series' preference for periods of conflict, upheaval, and massive societal change. The, the game takes place during her ascension to the throne, um, during this time period, uh, her father, Ptolemy XII, had passed away, and so he left the country into the hands of Cleopatra and her brother, Ptolemy XIII, uh, who is the boy king. And uh, right away, there was conflict and strife and, and a civil war between the two, and Cleopatra gets exiled. And so we catch up to her uh, in our context when she's exiled. And so she's on her way to reclaiming her throne. Pretty much everyone in Cleopatra's family has been, has been assassinating each other. Uh, so that creates this unique set that's tremendous to create a story and to go around all of this, this plot. Ptolemy 13 appears to have the full support of a masked secret society calling itself the Order of the Ancients, and since history tells us the Boy King's power grab was orchestrated mostly by his advisors, it's likely the masked men are behind the Civil War itself. The Order of the Ancients are trying to control Ptolemy XIII. They believe that he's younger and weak and that they could manipulate him easily. However, they're, they're a secret society, uh, and they will always be in Bayek's path, and so you will have to make your way through that. In any case, Cleopatra would soon have a powerful ally of her own. And at this point, uh, we have Caesar who shows up at some point chasing after another Roman, uh, Pompey. Pompey came to Egypt in order to be protected, thinking that they had an alliance. But Ptolemy, knowing that Caesar was coming, he decides to assassinate Pompey as a gift to Caesar. 
which only uh, uh, infuriates Caesar, saying that he was, yes, he was my enemy, but he was also a Roman. You cannot kill a Roman like that. And so this pushes him to ally with Cleopatra. And so we get to meet these key central figures, so Caesar being, you know, this legendary tactician, I think one of the most epic historical figures that we can possibly have uh, in the Assassin's Creed series. We wanted our players to experience it sort of as if, you know, for Bayek, these are also at some point uh, gods, you know, Cleopatra, Ptolemy, they're considered to be gods in this world. And as he meets them and he's almost, you know, begin at, in awe of who they are, as soon as he meets them and he realizes these are human beings with their own flaws and weaknesses and strengths, and he connects with some, doesn't connect with others, and this is, we, we want it to be a reflection of how, you know, hopefully our players can also envision these kind of people. Have them boiled to death inside a bronze bull. Goddess, no. They were cohost. Bayek's quest isn't just about exploring ancient Egypt or defying the Ptolemies, or even fighting the masked agents of the Order of the Ancients. It's about finding a new place in a world whose changing traditions have made him obsolete, and it's a quest that will lead, eventually, to the founding of what we now know as the Assassin Brotherhood. From the start, we know that assassins are fictive characters, so it's all right. I mean, we acknowledge that this is not a documentary, even if we're based off history, even if history is our playground and we like to play with it. So Bayek, uh, within that environment, even though he's fictive and he interacts with real people, we try to make it believable. That really uh, rootens him into the realm of Egypt. Assassin's Creed Origins is coming October 27th for Xbox One, PlayStation 4, and PC. To find out more, check out the other videos on this channel and visit us at UbiBlog.